What's up, everybody? Welcome back. Patrick here. Moving on to the next question. This question, as a heads up, is very difficult. One of the more difficult questions you'll get in this unit. You may have to watch this video a couple of times for it to really sink in, but I'm going to do my best to explain it as clearly as possible. So let's go. So if d of x equals f of g of h of x, find d prime 3. If h3 is equal to 2, h prime 3 equals 3, g of x equals x squared plus 2x, and f of x equals x cubed minus 2x. So lots going on in this question. Notice that this dx function that we're given, it's a composite function with three functions. So we have a function h of x within another function g within another function f. And we have to find d prime of 3. So we know that this function, let's rewrite it over here, we're going to have to find the derivative of it because we have to find d prime of 3. So let's start off by finding a general expression for the derivative first because this is a pretty complex function itself. So the derivative of this function, notice we're going to have to apply the chain rule, but we're going to have to apply it twice because there's three functions we're dealing with. So what we do when we have something like this is we take the derivative of the outer function first, like we've been doing before in the lecture videos, and then we keep the inside bracket the same. So that will just be g of h of x. And then we just have f prime instead of f. So we took the derivative of the outside function first, then we're gonna multiply it by the derivative of the next function inside, which is g. So we're gonna have g prime, and then we're gonna keep that bracket the same. That's gonna be h of x. So g prime h of x multiplied by the derivative of that final function h of x, which would just be h prime x. Okay, so not too bad so far. We have to find d prime of three. So basically, we're going to have to uh, plug in an x value of 3 for all the x values in this expression. So we'll have f prime of g of h of 3, right? So I plugged in an x value of 3 in this x times g prime of h of 3 times h prime of 3. Okay, so we got to figure out what's this expression going to equal given the rest of the information. Well, notice that we're given a bunch of these h3s here and then this h prime 3. And we know that h3 is equal to 2 and h prime 3 is equal to 3. So we can make some substitutions here. So we got f prime of g h of 3 is 2, so we can just write g of 2 here. Instead of writing g of h of 3, that's going to be 2. So we went from g of h of x to g of h of 3, plugging in x value of 3, and then h of 3 we know is 2, so we can just rewrite that as g of 2 times g prime of h of 3 again is 2 times h prime 3, which is given as 3. So we know that this whole expression is just 3. All right, so we're looking a lot better now. So we have to find what g of 2 is and g of prime 2 is. Notice that we're not given those expressions as numbers directly, like we were h of 3, h prime of 3, but we are given the function g of x. So we can work with this function on the side here. So if we have g of x equals x squared plus 2x, well, we can find what g of 2 is by just plugging in 2 for the x values in the function. 2 squared plus 2 times 2, that would be 4 plus 4, which would give us 8. So we know g of 2 is 8, and we also have to find g prime of 2. So what we can do is we can take the function g of x, and just find its derivative, g prime of x, which would be 2x plus 2, when we apply the power rule to these two expressions. 
So then g prime of 2, that will be simply plugging in 2 for this x value. 2 times 2 is 4, plus 2 gives us 6. So we did that on the side, and now we can plug in 8 for g of 2 and 6 for g prime of 2. So let's do that. So we'll have f prime, g of 2 is 8. And then we got g prime of 2 being 6. And then this 3 is still there. So now all we have to do is find f prime 8. And we're not given an expression for f prime 8, but we are given the function f of x, like we were g of x. So we got f of x equals x cubed minus 2x. So the derivative of that is going to be 3x squared minus 2, like that. And then we can just plug in this x value of 8 in the derivative for f. So f prime 8 would be what? 8 to the power of 2 is 64 times 3 gives us 192, and then 192 minus 2 gives us 190. Right, so I think I got that correctly. F prime 8 is going to be 190, right? So we plugged in an x value of 8, 8 squared 64 times 3, 192 minus 2, 190. So instead of writing f prime 8 here, we can now just simply write 190. So we'll have 190 times 6 times 3. And when you multiply those numbers, you end up getting 3,420. So that there is the answer for d prime 3. Let's actually write it over here. All right? That's your final answer right there, 3,420. So in my opinion, pretty tricky question. Again, one of the more difficult questions that you'll get in this unit. These questions you'll see come up, but usually you're only dealing with two functions. So you'll have like an f of g of x. Rarely will you see three functions being used together, f of g of h of x, like it was in this question. That's what makes it more difficult. So when you get a question like this, first thing you want to do, find a general expression for the derivative like we did here. We use the chain rule twice for all of these functions for f, g, h. And then what you do is you look at the information you give, uh, you're given and then you just start making substitutions. So h prime 3, h of 3. And then a lot of times you're not going to be given expressions, but you'll be given the functions. So then you got to do some side work like we did here, finding g of 2, g prime of 2, and then f prime 8. And then you just make all your substitutions. You keep going down the ladder and you end up getting to a point where you're just multiplying a bunch of numbers. And then when you multiply those numbers, 3,420, that's your final answer.